Getting around basics on the graphing calculator. This video features the Texas Instruments TI-83 and TI-84 series graphing calculators. Turn on the calculator by pressing the ON key at the lower left of the keypad. After finishing use, turn the calculator off by pressing the second key, then the ON key. This will save batteries. Otherwise, the calculator will turn itself off after three minutes without use. You might turn on your calculator and see nothing on the view screen. Does that mean that it needs new batteries? Turn on the calculator and be sure that there are four batteries in place. If batteries are there, it might just look like it's turned off because the contrast is set too low. To up the contrast, press the second key, then the up arrow key. Keep on repeating the process until you see the blinking cursor. After the blinking cursor appears, continue the process until you have the contrast you want. You can lower the contrast by pressing 2nd, then the down arrow key, and repeat the process. This view screen is an example of normal contrast, and this view screen is an example of low contrast. If you see this low contrast, press 2nd, up arrow, 2nd, up arrow, until you restore the contrast you want. Again, back to our example of normal contrast. If you keep on making the screen darker, the view screen can blacken. When you want to clear your view screen, press the clear key on the right side of the keypad. If pressing the clear key does not work, you may need to press clear by pressing second, then the mode key right next to it with the word quit above it. Just about every key on the calculator will do three things. This is the exponent key just below the clear key on the right side of the keypad. We can evaluate eight to the power of 6 by pressing the 8 key, then the exponent key, then the 6 key. We find the answer by pressing the enter key. We get to the pi entry by pressing 2nd, then the rooftop or exponent key on the right side of the keypad. And here is that key highlighted at the right of the keypad at the lower right. We get the numerical decimal approximation of pi by pressing the enter key. And this is the irrational number pi discovered by the ancient Greeks. We can enter the letter H by first pressing the alpha key at the upper left just below the second key. You should see the blinking alpha cursor key at the upper left of the view screen. Then press the exponent key at the right of the keypad. If we press enter we find the value the calculator has stored for H. Its current value stored for H is zero on my calculator, but we can change it to another number if we want. But storing a value for a letter is for another lesson. We go to the function editor, sometimes called the Y equals view, by pressing the key at the upper left of the keypad. Here in the function editor, we can enter up to 10 functions. To enter the variable X in the calculator, we find it here at the upper left next to the alpha key. And to graph the function y equals x that we entered, we press the graph key at the upper right of the keypad. There is an open cursor that we can access from here by just pressing the arrow keys up, down, right, or left. We see that the x and y coordinates at the bottom of the view screen. They change as we move the cursor around. When we press the trace button at the top row, there is a cursor blinking on the graph. Here it's at the origin, and with the left and right arrows we can move left and right on the graph. We go back to the function editor and enter a second function in y2, y equals x squared minus, two, minus 3. Look at this sign, it's the minus sign. To get the minus sign we must press the key shown at the far right of the keypad. Not to be confused with this negative sign at the bottom of the keypad. Let's go down to Y3 to enter the negative sign to see what it looks like. It's smaller, that is the negative sign, and raised a little higher. If you use a negative sign when you should use a minus sign, you'll get an error message when you try to graph. We press clear to take off the negative sign. Clear will remove the entire function from the line while the DEL or delete key will remove only one character at a time. Press graph. This is what we get. The functions y equals x and y equals x squared minus 3. When we press trace, the cursor is blinking at the origin, or the point 0 comma 0. And we see in the upper left corner the function y1 equals x, and that is the function that trace is set to evaluate. 
Now if we press the up arrow key on the keypad as shown, we see at the upper left that the trace is now evaluating y2 equals x squared minus 3. We also see the cursor blinking at the bottom of the parabola. We can use up arrow and down arrow to toggle back and forth between the function in y1 and the function in y2. This is what we get when we arrow to the left a few keystrokes, the cursor on the left side of the function, at least the parabola. And here, the red circle highlights the cursor location on the view screen. And if we press the down arrow to toggle down, we see the cursor on the line directly below where it was, and the function y1 equals x highlighted in the upper left corner. And here below we see the coordinates of the cursor location on the function y1 equals x. Let's press the y equals key to get back to the function editor. We'll bring the cursor right over the x where it's blinking. Press the second key. The up arrow is blinking right over the x. We press the DEL or delete key which activates the INS or insert operation. The cursor is blinking on and off over the x. Remember that negative sign we looked at earlier? This time we press it and we see the negative sign now in front of the x squared. It was inserted, or at least the negative sign, in front of it. Press graph. We see the quadratic function now turned upside down with the negative sign in front of the x squared. We go back to the function editor by pressing the y equals key. These two highlighted equal signs mean that both of the equations are active and will show up when graphed. We make the equation at the top inactive by placing the cursor over the equal sign and pressing enter. Now when we press graph we see only y2 which is our upside down parabola y equals negative x squared minus 3 because only the equation in y2 is now active. Now we'll see something else. We'll get ready to go to the table view by pressing second then graph. We can press the up arrow and scroll upward as we've done here or downward by pressing the down arrow. We press the y equals key and go back to the function editor. We go back up to y1 and reactivate it so the equal sign is now highlighted. We'll go back to the table again by pressing second then graph to get to the table view. Now we can see both functions in table form and we can see that for an input value of negative 21 y1 has an output value of negative 21 and y2 has an output value of negative 444. Now we press y equals again to get to our function editor. We enter the function y equals 11x representing how much John gets paid according to the number of hours he works. Now we press graph and this is what we get. We see a graph but not very well. The graph goes up too steeply for us to evaluate it from the graph on the view screen. Now we press the window key on the function key, second from the left, we see a standard view screen window. A standard window has x min or a minimum x value of negative 10 and x max of 10, a y min or minimum y value of negative 10 and a y max of 10. We can change these values to anything we want. I change the values of x min, y min and y max. We're adjusting the graph paper electronically to see what we want to see much better. Press graph. And now we have a more useful graph to correlate hours worked and earnings. If we use the trace key we can move up and down the line to see the relationship between John's pay and the number of hours he works. Now we'll look at the zoom key at the middle of the top and this is what we see, the zoom menu. We go down to 6. Option 6 is Z, Z standard for zoom standard and when we press enter that takes us to the standard window we saw earlier. No matter how badly your window is messed up, Zoom 6 always takes you back to normal. It's like normal graph paper. Now let's press the mode key just next to the second key and this is what we see. Inside the mode menu this second row refers to how many decimal places will show up on the calculator. We can go here to set the calculator to show two decimal places. I pressed enter to choose two decimal places. Let's go back to the symbol for pi by pressing second then the exponent key. Press enter. We see that we're rounded off to two decimal places instead of seeing all the digits like we did earlier. 
If you turn on your calculator and try to graph functions and it's behaving weirdly, often it may be because someone came to the mode window and changed the settings. This is a good place to check out if things look strange when working with your calculator. We'll now go someplace else, the format menu. Press second, then the zoom key which accesses the format view. The word format is just above the zoom key. These attributes determine attributes of your graph view. This feature, grid, on this line produces dots on your graphing view screen to make it look more like graph paper. Here's grid on highlighted. Just arrow over to it and press enter. Press graph. Here we see the dots that make the view screen more like gridded electronic graph paper. Now back to the format view. We press second then zoom with the word format above it. This view is another prime sabotage target. Here a person can really make things look strange, so just something to watch out for. Now we're going to talk about a very powerful feature on your calculator, the ANS key. ANS is short for answer and we can start here from a cleared view screen. Let's enter this expression, pi times 30 divided by 360. When we press enter, this is what we get, 0.26. Remember that this is a rounded answer since we changed the calculator to two decimal places in the mode menu. We can access ANS by pressing second, then the negative sign key with the ANS above it. This is extremely helpful in multi-step problems. The number stored for ANS is the last value calculated by your calculator. We can then multiply it by another number like 2 here. Press enter. We get 0.52. We can activate ANS another way besides pressing second, then the negative sign. Let's press the multiply key on the right side of the keypad. The ANS came up automatically when we pressed the multiply or other operation sign. We can use the add, subtract, and divide keys as well. The calculator has another great feature. If you enter a long expression like this one for the volume of a sphere, you don't have to type it in all over again if you make a mistake. As soon as I pressed enter and got 67.95, I noticed that I entered 5 over 3, but the formula for volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Do we have to re-enter the whole formula? No, we don't. Instead of typing it in all over again, first press the second key, then the Enter key that accesses the Entry option just above the Enter key. We are taken back to where we were before pressing Enter to calculate 67.95. We can arrow over to the left until the cursor is over the 5 that we want to change to 4 to get 4 thirds. Then we press 4 to change it to 4 without having to retype the whole formula. Press Enter. We now have the correct answer, 54.36, without having had to retype everything all over again. Let's say that your calculator is all messed up. When graphing, the view screen is all the wrong size. It's the wrong number of decimal places, just very wrong. You don't know where you're, you are. What can you do? You can reset the calculator to its original default settings. To reset your calculator to its original settings, first press second, then the plus sign key which accesses the MEM or memory menu. Scroll down to 7 or press reset. Press enter. You can reset all the RAM, choice 1 or just choice 2. Usually choice 2 will take care of you. This video is only an introduction to some of the basic capabilities of your calculator. Other lessons will further explore the use of these keys and introduce new keys. More specifically, there are follow-up video lessons regarding operations accessed by these function keys on the top of the keypad. There's the stat plot menu, the window function, the table set operation, the zoom menu, and the calc menu. In addition, there's the stat menu that we can access to run regression and other features of the calculator. You may specifically access any of the lessons on these features by clicking on the associated button in the image below. This has been Getting Around Basics on the Graphing Calculator. Thanks for viewing.